open up the home screen if we needed to learn a tutorial, open a project, or start a new project. You have the arrow tool or the selection tool. This allows us to select windows, elements in the timeline, uh, different levels of graphics that are above each other in an overlapping fashion. The hand tool. The hand tool allows us to move around the scene without taking the uh, video out of frame. Uh, the magnifying tool, um, only useful if you want to zoom in. We'll see that second. We have the rotate tool. Uh, and then we have um, the unified camera tool, the pan behind, the shapes tool, or they call it just the rectangle tool, but there's other shapes behind it. The pen, text, brush, clone stamp, eraser, and then last but not least you have a roto brush tool and a puppet position tool. All of these can be very, very useful tools. So let's get some footage in first so we can begin to work. Uh, I'm going to come over here to the effects bin, uh, project bin, and I'm just going to double click here. And it's going to cause me to go out and look for uh, some footage. And I'm just going to grab our little swimming dog a little bit today. He's going to be perfect for this. And I'm going to make a quick pre comp of him just like we did in class the other day and let me switch to the hand grabber and I hover over the little pre-comp button right here and release and we get a comp now I talked yesterday about how do we rename this because swimming dog does not really work for a pre-comp name or a comp name. Normally you just click on it and you hit enter. And that's how you can rename your comp files. So as we're coming up this we're just going to call this comp one. We're going to have several of these today. And yep I'm going to go down here and start to organize. I'm going to put in three folders. First folder is going to be footage audio and the na last footage or last folder is going to be comps and I'll begin to organize this a little bit and I just find this to be a very useful way of organizing and keeping <clears throat> my stuff in a fashion where I can find it. So now that we've got a comp in the window here, I want to talk about these first two tools. This is the selection tool, also sometimes called the move tool. And if you click and drag, you can move your clip. And notice you have ability to move your clip outside the frame of the composition. In other words, you could have it start off screen and then come into screen. The difference between it or the move tool and <clears throat> the hand tool, the hand tool allows us to move the whole composition around. Now this can be very useful if in combination with the zoom tool. We can zoom in and then move around the composition to work on a specific area. This is kind of a, a better way to work instead of always trying to grab with the selection tool. Now note, there's times you're going to want to know each of these and the selection tool you can always remember as V on your keyboard. It will switch and the hand tool is H. Makes pretty sense. Alright, the selection tool looks like a V that's been inverted and the hand tool H for hand. The magnifying tool is Z. That is for zooming. So you can zoom in. If you hold down your Option or Alt key, you can zoom out. And yes, there may be a time where you're going to want to zoom way out in your composition so that you can apply an animation that goes across or over and you want to see the beginning and the end 
uh, in the workspace here. And that's what this area is, is the workspace. The composition is here, or the document space, where the dog is. But most of the time, I'll be working with fit. The rotate tool is a very useful tool because this is different than the rotate tool that we're going to learn a little bit later on here. So this rotate tool, if I zoom out a little bit, the zoom tool, and the hand tool, put this in my screen in the front. The rotate tool allows me to rotate a composition or straighten it out. And this is kind of important because this is not an actual animation effect. This is just a physical effect. It physically changes the dimension or shape of your film. And it allows you to be rotated on a 90 degree axis. Now, that axis can be in different spots. We can rotate from different points. Um, there is this lovely little gizmo here in the center. I don't know if you guys see it. I'm going to see if I can grab a hold of it and move it around. <clears throat> grab the pan behind tool. I'm just going to put the reference or reference marquee in the center. It was here in the center. I'm going to put it up to the upper left hand corner. Go to the rotate tool. Now I can rotate and I pivot <clears throat> around that one point. So this can be really useful if you want to have something kind of fly in, ching, or fly down into your compositions. Really kind of useful. And we'll see begin to see how some of these can be animated. We'll try them out in a little bit. Different ways we'll work with this. All right, to put it back, I'm just going to drag it back to the center. Best I can. There we go. Not too bad. Next, there is the shape tool. The shape tool is very, very useful. Now, when working with the shape tool, it's wise to, you know, think about what you want to do ahead of time, where you want to put a shape, and what you want that shape to do. Because shapes do two things. One, they make shapes, but they also mask. And masking is very powerful because it allows us to take one layer upon another layer and see through it. So I'm going to draw a shape here. And immediately, it begins to draw a mask. Now, this could be added, or it could be, if you come down in the tool here, subtracted. And we get the opposite. Now, when it's in subtracted form, any layer above it would show up or in it. So let's kind of play with this a little bit. You can move it around. You can change its shape by singly grabbing on a point. Often find sometimes it's easier to click on some of the handles. Mm -hmm. You can move it with the move tool around. So you might use this for maybe a title effect or you know having something that you know you want to have pop in and be a title. There's other shapes though here too. You have the rounded rectangle, you have um, different ones. And now here's a, a neat trick. To keep away from getting just a mask, there's one way, easy way to do this. Because right now I'm selected on my footage. If I click below first, then come up, get the rectangle tool, I'll leave it filled with red, and I'll drag, and now I have a shape. And you'll see it comes in the list as a shape. So that's really critical to remember. Again, I'll demonstrate that again. To 
Work with a shape. It is vital that you do not select on your footage. If your footage is selected, it'll make a mask always. If I click below it, I can come up, get the shape tool, get a color, maybe get white. And then I'll drag a small little bar here at the bottom for a lower third. And bring it in. I'm using a move tool. Uh, I can also size, scale, transition this uh, using <clears throat> the various tools. If you come to the outside edge, you can rotate it a little bit on one of the corners. Next, we have the pen tool. The pen tool is another very useful tool. It's used for making custom shapes or custom masks. This can be very useful for rotoscoping. This can be very useful for inlaying, uh, saying picture in picture. Imagine you have a television set in or on your film, and you want to put another movie or visual on it. We can't really record a television set because it's moving at a certain gigahertz, and it would just look like a bunch of blurry lines. So the magic of Hollywood was to learn to do picture in picture. Now to do picture in picture, there's two ways of doing this. You click below your art, make sure no shape or composition is selected, and then you click a series of dots, and I'm just going to click randomly. To make a very funky looking shape and this would be a shape I could then mask or I could have things mask into this shape by clipping it to it uh, and then I'd have more footage uh, area to work with in the sense of a second plane a lot of times people will make a comp that goes inside this as a masking comp and it's really kind of cool we'll see that later on in the lesson uh, with some turtles. We'll be building a mask for a television set. Alright, now I'm just going to get the move tool, take that one out. I want to talk about the type tool. The type tool is a very useful tool. It allows us basically to type on the screen. You click, it comes up, you could say doggo in the pool. Now, by default, it comes up white. You can come over here, you can change the color of your type. I'm going to change it to black. And I can pick its font. There's lots of fonts here. You can also go to Adobe font here. If you've gotten the Adobe stuff downloaded, it's really useful. You just click it, and it should take you to it. Yep, there it goes. Here's Toolkit. All of Adobe's fonts are loaded and free to use. You can pick any font. You could go and look for something that is decorative. And I kind of like, um, let's see here. I'm going to go with Bello. I'm going to view the family. And, oh, that looks nice. All I have to do is hit activate. It's going to have me sign in. I gotta do that with my account. Oh, it's gonna send me a text message now. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, all my software is done through my personal account. All right, on my laptop. So, yep, there it's activated. I can now go in to After Effects. And your character panel is over here to the right. And I'm going to look for that font that I just installed. And I'll type in Bello. It should be there. Bello script. Let me give it a second to catch up. B E 
There it is. There's my scripty font. I'll move it into place. And now I've got several layers in my composition now. I've got a shape layer. I've got um, this shape layer doesn't really exist. Sometimes when you've deleted something on the screen here, it doesn't always delete it in the timeline. So you always have to keep an eye on that and you delete what you want out of the timeline. So I should just have the three layers here. The type layer, the white shape layer behind the type, and the swimming dog. I can now begin to think about maybe making some short animations with this. Some very short animations. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that real quick here. So first off, I'm just going to hide a couple of the layers. I'm going to turn off the doggo layer and the shape layer. And I'm going to work with the dog first. All right, I'm going to just kind of bring this in in a neat way. So I've got the dog layer and I'm going to hit T to transform. And that's going to bring up opacity. And what I want to do is set an opacity of zero for my first keyframe here. And it's kind of hard to see, you know, when you have it like this, uh, there's not really an extended version, but I'm going to set a keyframe. There's this little clock watch. We learned a little bit about them in Premiere. I click it, and then I'm just going to have a from fade to black, just a little bit of distance away, and I'm going to bring the opacity up. I'm just going to play that real quick. It really jumped really fast. That one's at 100. That should be at zero. And this one should be at 100. Okay. So we should see a gradual fade in. Mm -hmm. A little bit of one. I probably could extend this a little longer. Let me bring this a little bit longer. Uh, 15 or 5 or 6 frames is not a lot. So let me bring it up to 1 second for a fade in. That's much better. You know, really thinking about your timeline. I know when we look at these, we see these numbers. 15F, 1F. 1.115 f 2 f right here this is only two seconds i mean it looks like a, a tremendous amount of time or distance but it really is only two seconds so sometimes effects take a little bit longer than you think they're going to to work all right now that i've got that other ways to work with this okay i'm going to come to the shape tool this time i'm just going to turn down the angle to the left of the color box and in here, there are some tools. It'll tell me the contents. It'll tell me what the object it is, rectangle. And I can come down here and there's a transform as well. I can press that and in here is all these wonderfully useful tools. Yes, opacity is there again. Uh, rotate is here, scale is here, position is here, anchor point is here. And I'm gonna use some of these. So let me turn back on its layer. And the first thing I'm going to do with this particular object is I'm going to change its anchor point. I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to adjust its anchor point a little bit. Kind of getting it set where I want. And then I'm going to look at rotation. Notice it rotates around that anchor point there in the middle of the screen. Well, that's not really what I want. So I'm going to come up here and set these back to zero. I want the box to kind of rotate in. So I'm going to move the anchor point. I'm going to use the pan behind tool. I'm going to bring it to the lower left corner here. And now I'm going to 
rotate this to see how it rotates in. Not too bad. I'm going to bring it down here a little bit. So get the move tool. And I'll line it up here. I'm going to set a rotation keyframe. I'm going to drag a little bit away. And I'm going to set another rotation keyframe. So I'll set that one there. I'll click in and click off. So this is the one I want to be zero. And I'm thinking about the end here and working my way backwards. So I'm going to come back in time. And this time, I'm going to set the rotation to negatives. So now when this plays, let me give it a little bit of length here. It just comes into place really nicely. Just a little bit of animation effects. Kind of like the lower third title comes in. Mm -hmm. Alright, sounds good. All right. Now, we will animate the text. Now, what we're doing is what they call keyframing. When you're working in keyframes, uh, it's really important to understand that these little guys right here, these little dots, these all mean something uh, in a film. So we're going to work with them here a little bit. And I'm going to get the text out now. Turn it on. I'm going to reposition it. Let's get just the text layer. Sometimes text can be hard to grab because it is white. And I find that the easiest way to do that is lock the other layers. And then you can grab your text layer. Um, because text sits on such a transparent background, it can be hard to grab. It's easier to grab the video or it's grab the, you know, the object behind it. And I'm just going to work with the text here in a, in a different fashion. I'm going to hit S for scale. And this is going to bring it in. And I'm going to make it go to here. This is what I want it to be in time. I think that's where I want it to be scaled up. I'll hit the little scale mark and yes I like to work backwards with this kind of work because I want to know where I want the final position to be and what I want it to finally look and I can set it then I can come back in time and reduce the size go down to zero like that and now I can hit play And the text kind of comes in. Now, I can add more than one effect. You know, I like the way that text comes in. I like it a lot. And I want to make sure I can go to it and from it. So I'm going to line up using these little marquees at the end, or maybe over in the middle of yours, depending on how yours is set up. Uh, mine's for the small screen, so they put a lot of things that are useful on the left-hand side. I can... Now select this, and now I'm going to add another effect, and that is going to be the T for opacity. And yeah, I could turn down this arrow and see all those effects, but by using the keyboard shortcut, I'm just dealing with it at one at a time, and I find that to be very useful. So you have S for scale, T for opacity, W for rotation, or not, oh no, R for rotation. Uh, and I can't remember what, um, let's see here, what is W, no, no, W is not doing anything anymore. F closes the drawer, and let's see here, 
Um, kind of our basics. Um, I believe P is for position. P is for position. All right, so I'm going to go back to T. I'm going to set my opacity 100% there. And I'm going to come back a little bit. I'm thinking right about there. I'll set the opacity to be zero. So that as it comes in, Looks like it's just kind of flowing in. Doggo in the pool. Something very simple, easy to do. You might want to give this a try with your software, playing around with some of the effects, starting to play around, getting some ideas of how to begin to animate, working with the keyframes. You might come up with something a little bit more interesting than I have. My goal is not to be super interesting, but to give you some cool effect uh, in the idea of how to use these tools. These